Now, yesterday, an anti-trans activist called Dan from Sydney posted an outright lie, which goes like this. What do gay men like John Nicholson, an SNP politician, Owen Jones and David Paisley, a Scottish actor, have in common? They only date biological men while smearing same-sex attracted women as bigots for enforcing the same boundaries. Congratulations to all the feminists who shone a light on their stunning hypocrisy. Now, the purpose of this outright lie is very straightforward. It's to portray support for trans rights as misogyny, even though all polling shows consistently that uh, women support trans rights more than men, not just slightly more, but actually by quite a big margin. That's the case here in Britain and elsewhere. Also the case that disproportionately public champions of trans rights tend to be women, from Mary Black to Angela Rayner in politics, in the media, from Ash Sarkar uh, to Natasha Devon. The reason gay men are singled out in this way, gay men, of course, again, support trans rights disproportionately because trans people are going through all the things that gay and bisexual men have traditionally gone through, and we share the same spaces, we're part of the same community. Um, now, but the whole point is to target gay men in this way to show, well, actually, this is about misogyny and hatred of women, and some of them just lapse into outright homophobia, saying, well, actually, it's because gay men hate women, and so on and so forth. Now, the claim of this anti-trans activist, which has over 5,000 likes on Twitter, isn't just slightly false, or mostly false, it's entirely false. I've never said anything like this, not even close, like not even something that could be misconstrued as me saying this. Now, my own controversial opinion, and this is really going to shock some of you, is that you should only have sex with someone you want to have sex with, as long as they consent, obviously. Like, it's up to you, it's your own personal choice, none of my business actually, if I'm going to be really honest about it. So, when I made that clear, given that's my lifelong view, some of his fellow anti-trans activists challenged me to prove I'd never said it. How would I do that? How's that possible? I mean, these people are so preposterous, you kind of think to yourself, why even engage? But it's an interesting question in itself. What, am I supposed to provide documentation of every single thing I've written and said in my 38 years alive? You ludicrous people. Now, Dan from Sydney then tried a different tack because he didn't have any evidence uh, for his lie because none exists. So he said, he, he, he said, you can prove it. I mean, it's like literally like the saying in witch trials this. If you unequivocally state that lesbians are not transphobic for being vocal or nice about exclusive attraction to the same sex, you can see he's shifted the goalpost here. He doesn't have any evidence for his claim, so he's abandoned that. And um, he doesn't know anything about my own dating history either, incidentally. Uh, the original hypocrisy, as he claimed, was that I only dated people and he considered to be men without me saying anything. Now it's to do with the public declarations of others, so the goalposts have shifted. But what does he even mean here? Well, he means the right of people to publicly say that trans women are men and trans men are women, i.e. to just rampantly misgender them. And the way I've put it there, frankly, is even more toned down than the way lots of them misgender trans people, which is often just aggressive and hateful and all the rest of it. That's what he's talking about. It's got nothing to do with who you date whatsoever. It's completely irrelevant to that point. Now, my response was clear. Why do you need to tell, to publicly tell the world that you think trans women are men and trans men are women? Objectively makes the lives of trans people harder and more miserable. The basis of hate crimes and violence and abuse and discrimination against trans people is that they are imposters, that they're not really who they say they are, that they're either entitled, aggressive women or, uh, sorry, entitled and aggressive men or fallen women. That's the basis of the abuse. So uh, going around misgendering them is just obviously whipping up hatred and bigotry to them. So you make their lives harder, but how does it make your life happy or contented to do that? Like, what, what, what benefit is it to you? Are you going to lie on your deathbed thinking to yourself, oh, I wish I'd spent more time misgendering trans people on the internet. Didn't, didn't, get enough, didn't put enough time and effort into that. I actually don't want the answer to that because I genuinely think some of them are going to lie on their deathbed thinking that. But anyway, we get to the root of the objection. It's not that I castigate lesbians for their dating preferences, something I've never done and I never will. It's that I accept trans people for who they are and who they say they are. So that led, what I said, a load of overwhelmingly straight people who are overwhelmingly the basis of the anti-trans movement to denounce me a queer man who's been, let's get the violin out, but repeatedly homophobically abused online and in person and indeed violently gay bashed as homophobic and reinstating a don't ask, don't tell policy. Well, look, here I am, a queer man, saying I am overwhelmingly attracted uh, to men. See? You can see that with, can say that with any, without any problems. Turns out you can ask and you can tell. So there we have it. Now, I know gay men who have dated trans men, cis gay men, I'm talking about there. Now, the response of these people is to go, well, they're not really gay then, are they? So I was going to put this politely, but 
I think life is too short at this point. So let me just put it bluntly. The dating lies, the sex lies, and the identities of others has the square root of fuck all to do with you. You monstrous, unhinged, horrible fanatics. Just want to make that absolutely clear and put that on the record. Now, here's another point I also want to make, because these people claim to be speaking, as does the LGB Alliance, ludicrously titled organisation. They claim to be speaking on behalf of gay and bi men and women. But amongst the LGBTQ people, anyone who knows anything about LGBTQ people, LGBTQ spaces, the LGBTQ communities and all the rest of it, knows that these fanatics, which is what they are, are overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly rejected. That they are regarded as bigoted weirdos by the vast majority of LGBTQ people. They are a tiny, tiny fringe. In no way have they got anything to do with the vast majority of LGBTQ people. You can see that, you know, the Pride Festivals organised by LGBT communities across the country, what they do is they champion and uphold the rights of trans people. Now, I'd know some of them said publicly, in a state of real grief, this is how could this be happening? That when a handful of anti-trans activists who keep invading these Pride Festivals, which were about inclusivity and love, th that it was cis lesbians who shouted them down the loudest which is what happened. Now, they then portrayed this as lesbians ejected from a pride march. They're not there on that basis. They're there as anti-trans activists who were, again, shouted down by mainstream lesbians who have the mainstream view of the vast majority of LGBTQ people that trans people are our siblings and need to be protected, not least because at the moment they're facing the vast brunt of anti-LGBTQ um, hatred. So, you know, some of the fury and anger of this fringe, which is what they are, is precisely because they know that their own community have nothing but contempt for them. Nothing but contempt for them. It must really hurt to be hated by your own minority, and it's clearly eating the souls of these people, and I'm not surprised. Now, you don't have to sleep with a trans person. Why do I have to say this? It shouldn't have to be said. It's an obvious truism. Nobody's forcing you to do that. Do, again, sleep with whoever you want. And I, I would know, like, whoever will have you. Because I would suggest the dating pools of these fanatics are pretty limited. Like, literally, take what you can, you guys. Like, if you're going to go out of your way, though, if you're going to go out of your way to say you don't think trans people are who they say they are, to go around saying trans women are men, trans, trans men are women, and all that kind of stuff, don't pretend you're doing something noble. Don't pretend this is some, uh, you know, about freedom or liberation or anything like that. You're just a cruel, heartless person. It's not deeper than that. Like, you can try and rationalise it in kind of ideological terms, but when it comes down to it, that is all you are. And that's all I really have to say about the anti-trans cult. You are just some of the most revoltingly horrible, cruel, nasty, cold, just mean people. Mean, horrible people. Radicalised on the internet. That you've gone, I don't know what's happened in your life. Some of you, obviously, the way you've ended up in this particular moment is sad. A lot of your own friends and relatives are just the ones most loudly telling you what the hell are you doing? Why are you spending your life doing that? You know exactly what I'm talking about because that's what's happened to the vast majority of you who often talk about how your friends or your family have turned on you. They haven't turned on you. They're just like, what has happened to this person? Because like every cult member, you've been radicalised in a way that has turned your life upside down in many cases. Now... You're completely unaware, many of you, of the humanity that you've lost, and I hope that you find peace. But stop pretending, stop pretending that whipping up bigotry against trans people, one of the most marginalised minorities on earth, makes you in any way a good person fighting for equality. It doesn't. As I said, sleep with whoever will have you, but leave trans people alone. Over and out.